My name is Vasu Kali. I'm a Principal Enterprise Service Manager from AWS ProServe, focusing on global financial services customers. As you all know, migrating from decades-old mainframes and systems onto a modern microservices platform can bring its own set of you know, challenges and risks. Okay. So for Prudential Financial, what that means is uh, kind of merging several data stores and repositories that they have in the systems migrating over 50 million more records, deciphering the embedded business logic, and also making sure that the integration happens seamlessly with you know, upstream and downstream systems. So all this needs to happen when you're trying to modernize onto a microservices platform, okay? So in this session, you're going to learn how Prudential Financial is systematically modernizing their systems and applications and platform on a 30-year-old mainframe and relational database onto a cloud-based platform using AWS serverless and uh, NoSQL technologies, which includes AWS Lambda, Amazon Document DB, and uh, Amazon Event Bridge. Okay, learn how this enabled you know in building a very unified customer view and enabling the customer services overall. So that said, I'll introduce uh, customers from Prudential uh, Financial, Saurabh Patel and Uri Joshi, to take you through the journey that they have at uh, Prudential. Thank you, Vasu. Good morning, all. Thanks for joining us today. I am Saurabh Patel. I'm the architect and team lead for the customer domain group at Prudential. My career spans financial services across investment banking, consumer banking, insurance, retirement. First, I'd like to tell you more about Prudential. At Prudential, our purpose is to make lives better by solving the financial challenges of our changing world. You might find Prudential in your search for a life insurance policy or a tax deferred investment product like an annuity. Your employer may have engaged us to provide your work benefits or to provide your 401k investment options. During your retirement, we might service your pension benefit. This allows employers to focus on their core business. And we provide these and many more services across the globe. But why choose Prudential? So just last week, I was in a meeting with over 10 colleagues. We were discussing what systems we have to put in place to service a certain customer segment. That was a customer segment that wouldn't be making peak benefit claims until 30 years from today. So we don't just plan for the next five years, we have to plan for the next 50 and beyond. So again, why Prudential? Over a century of service and commitment, over a trillion in assets managed, over 50 million customers in over 50 countries. Those customers are at the center of our technology transformation. Our new customer engagement models require us to build out new tech-forward experiences which drive the need for us to modernize our systems. One of those systems in dire need of modernization is CIS, or Customer Information Source. CIS is a 30-year-old mainframe system responsible for providing a single view of the customer and to manage their accounts and product portfolio. CIS also assists with privacy, risk, marketing, compliance, and many other functions. Now, we have many challenges with CIS, and I think some of you will be able to relate with the following experience. So your business partners ask you, how long will it take to launch a new accounting system? You say six months. They ask you, how long would it take to just go ahead and enhance your existing accounting system? You say six months. Your business partners haven't stopped looking at you funny ever since. Well, with CIS, getting any changes made is often very costly due to its monolithic architecture spanning numerous functions. 
its mainframe infrastructure, residing in a co-location facility, adds to those costs. We also miss out on cloud infra benefits. Its COBOL programming language make talent acquisition and development very difficult. If any of you know someone who wants to learn COBOL, please do let me know. To address the CIS challenges, we have introduced a next generation customer domain solution. With a new cloud native architecture, we are able to reduce costs by right sizing and auto scaling our infrastructure across environments. By using microservices, we are able to lower change costs and we are also able to plug in best fit capabilities. Now transitioning to that next generation solution comes with its own set of challenges. We have to account for functionality across three legacy platforms. We have to continuously ingest data from over 25 external data feeds. Each feed has its own variable data processing frequency. And we have over 10 different binary file formats to parse. So our transition approach involves one, collecting and aggregating data from over 15 different backend systems and over 25 external data feeds. Two, by designing true microservices for subdomains such as customer account, portfolio, and preferences. Three, creating a single source of high quality trusted mastered data. And four, shutting down burdensome legacy systems after a prod parallel transition period. To get started with our transition, we put together potential scrum teams. To fast track the transition, we engaged AWS ProServe. AWS ProServe provided architecture and design recommendations spanning data transfer, messaging, databases, security, and other cloud services. I would now like to hand over the floor to our amazing technology lead, Urvi Joshi. Thank you, everyone. You're all here after a couple nights in Vegas, bright and early. Welcome. I will be Joshi, Director Tech Lead at Prudential Financials. I'm excited to share with you our journey on customer domain, our experiences, and what we've planned forward. Let me begin by introducing CIS. CIS is at the center of managing all of the client information and customer information and contracts. It houses all of this information in IBM DB2, the disability and claims, privacy and consents, security and compliance. It also executes all of the functionality of fraud detection, policy administration and maintenance, address validation, letter generation, much more has to get this information and data from different prudential systems, like the different policy administration systems, business intelligence, and other enterprise systems, and also other business partners, third-party vendors, government affiliates. It gets this data from the systems using files or real-time events. It also needs to manage the capabilities for customer-facing applications for inquiry and updates through channels like digital channels like web, mobile, Genesis, CSR, through APIs or real-time events. It also needs to sync this data to other applications and servicing platforms within the Prudential ecosystem. So it has to keep all this data in sync and be up and running at all times. That's a lot for one monolithic application. That's like a big ball of mud. So it is time for us to now embrace a new paradigm, domain-driven design. Without going into the details of DDD jargon, I do want to touch upon concepts of domain, subdomain, and bounded context. With the vision of the servicing domain for the customer, let's talk about subdomains like policy administration, 
for other business units like life and annuities, for example, communications that help send out communications to digital or mail to the customers, distribution platform, which allows sale of products to our advisors, customer and contract management to manage changes in the policy and products, and customer identity to enable digital capabilities for the customer. For this presentation, we'll focus on customer management. We will get the data from the different policy admin systems, life and annuities, which are upstream, and bring the data into customer management subdomain through an anti-corruption layer. With this information, with MDM being an extension of the capability, we'll build out the profile of the customer with personal information, email, phone, address, consents and preferences, and the portfolio of the customer. Now that's a big spider web. With all of the domains, subdomains, and sub and bounded context in the picture, it's the ease with which we will be able, in a decoupled way, through event-driven design, manage all the data flow and exchange through these systems. So at the end, it all comes together when we are servicing the customer. Fully defining the customer domain, keeping with the core principle, staying customer obsessed, we want to define a central data store with document DB. And for that, we need to get the data from the different admin systems, just like CIS does. We also need to exchange this data with the different subdomains in the Prudential ecosystem. Manage requests for inquiry and updates through customer-facing applications, web, mobile, CSR. Even though we are at the center, the window to the world, we are partnering with CDO to bring in the capability of master data management. It brings in an advanced capability of match, merge, deduplication, defining survivorship rules, working with CDO data stewardship to define standardized rule sets and validation, and define a unique data model for customer identity. It is with this partnership and capability that we will be able to envision our goal to bring the best customer service for the customer. Knowing now what we have to build and the why brings us to the how. The data pipeline is the foundation of customer domain. In its most simplest form, bringing data from all the different 44 plus admins brings its own challenges. A lot of these systems themselves are legacy mainframe applications. So the file sets that they have data stored in is EBCDIC format. We'll use Informatica as an ETL tool to bring the data and transform to JSON. Apply standardization and rule sets for all the different data formats and variables and attribute values into a standardized set for customer domain. Prepare the data for mastering to send to MDM. MDM brings in Atacama as the vendor tool of choice to bring in the MDM cap technical capability. Identifies unified customer records, applies universal identity to those records and sends it back to customer domain. Now we have all the customer records housed in document DB collections. And then we'll build microservices on top of this customer data to enable applications that are customer facing to be able to access and manage this data. Breaking down the data pipeline, let's talk about data transfer. As I mentioned, a lot of these data files are in mainframe application systems in EBCDIC format, variable and compacted files. We have to transform this into something that's more processable, manageable. So we use Informatica as an ETL tool to convert using a data file and a copybook reference file to convert that to JSON. Informatica will drop it in a NAS folder. An AWS data sync agent and service will enable us to transfer that into a predefined S3 bucket in the AWS account over Direct Connect. 
The challenge here is data sync on an AWS account is single threaded and it, it cannot manage the volume for all the different applications. So it adds a delay of an hour per se per transfer. When we talk about 44 different admins, that's some overhead we have to deal with. Informatica Suite brings in features like Power Exchange that helps extract the data from the different admin data files. And for each data type, unique data maps like client, contract, email, phone, and others, it applies IDQ, which helps with name parsing, address parsing, and validation. And then it's able to define a parameterized workflow for different instances of the admin following a similar format and convert to JSON the same way in a templatized form, drop it in a NAS folder, and then transfer it over data sync into S3. Once the data transfer is complete, what's next? The data ingestion and processing. We will refer to this as data gateway synonymously. Here, once the data is in the S3 bucket, an event bridge rule is triggered, which in turn kicks off a step function. The step function, as the name suggests, is an orchestration of steps, starting with file validation. The data file is one file and the control file is another file. The data file has all the information about the customer contracts and the control file is details of each data type and the count. If, if there's anything wrong in file validation, the file processing will be aborted. And the file will be copied to an error location, and an SNS notification will be sent out to the concerned parties. If all goes well, the glue job is triggered. The glue job here is the bread and butter, the heart of the file processing and ETL. For every record that we receive in the data file, we'll assign a correlation ID, which is a hash value of line of business, contract number, customer's name, and the role and the relationship the customer has on the contract, like an owner. If I, Urvi Joshi, have a policy five years ago, and I bought a policy a year ago, these are two distinct correlation IDs for the ingestion process. It stages this record in its raw form in a staging collection, and it also will create a skeleton of the record that it needs to send to MDM, which is a subset of the raw data, because MDM does not need all of the information for mastering. It also knows the volume of data that it ingested. We are talking about initial hydration here per admin, could be millions of customers, and that all of the data has to be transformed and sent to MDM in their S3 bucket, but in addition, Knowing this volume, it requests a, bun a bulk universal ID generator to generate universal IDs, millions of them, and send it to MDM. Now, MDM, once it receives the file in their S3, it's in a separate account. So we will make sure that we have the correct cross-account and assumption of roles set up for cross-connection. Following standard principles for security and logging, we leverage AWS services like KMS for encryption, IAM for roles and groups, CloudWatch for logging, and for error, error handling, we've defined SQS where the events will be published. Lambda will pick up those error events and an SNS notification will be sent out to the concerned parties. In this case, it will be MDM, Data Gateway, and Informatica. What is MDM, you ask? We just sent it a bunch of data in an S3 file. Atacama, as a tool of choice, takes all of the source records and puts it in an instance layer. It applies cleansing and standardization rule sets on this data, identifies match and merge and survivorship rules, aggregates the data from all of this record, identifies and establishes unique identity for the customers. And this is what it will call as the master copy, the golden record for the customer. 
This golden record is what is now sent back to the consuming applications. In this case, it's customer gateway, customer domain. Let's take a look at behind the scenes what happens in the AWS console when things are in action. This is a snapshot from a test region, of course, from one of our live systems where we receive and simulated a drop of the data file and the control file in our S3 bucket. The step function is triggered and following the happy path, of course, it's just a conditional tree, decision tree that starts with file validation, with all goes well, the glue job is triggered, and when it's completed, it will move the file to a completed folder, and the step function will complete. This is the glue job. It is configured currently with a glue version of 2.0 in production. It took 22 minutes to complete ingestion phase for 100K records or so. And the number of workers and DPUs that we've configured, we came upon this number by just scaling on volume and identifying the optimal configuration that gives us the best output. This is the input parameters needed for the glue job. It needs the connection parameters to the document DB, the staging and the master collection the location of the S3 bucket, the files that it needs to receive and validate and process, and the MDM's S3 bucket that it needs to transfer the file to, and the role that it needs to assume to send the file transfer. This is a snapshot of one of the staging record in its raw form. All of the data elements are in this document. In addition, every record is tagged with a correlation ID the file ID with which the file that the, this record came from, and an event ID for every transaction that we send to MDM. It is marked as in progress because it's just the ingestion phase yet. This is the skeleton record of the master golden record that we will manage in the customer data gateway. Here, the universal ID is not assigned yet because it's MDM who will assign it for every correlation ID, and it's a subset of the data that is in the staging collection. Once the data ingestion phase is complete and the data is transformed and sent to MDM, MDM will do its magic, churn through the motion, apply match and merge and survivorship rules, could take a couple of hours based on the volume of the data, we're talking billions, and then once MDM is completed, it will send the file back to customer data gateways, S3 bucket. An event bridge rule is triggered, and a step function is kicked off. If you look at the design, we followed the same components so as to not to have to manage multiple moving parts. Here, the file validation is against the golden record file that we received from MDM, and the end of job file that says Mastering is complete and the master data records are ready for ingestion. The glue job here now is to process all of the golden records. Once it finishes validation each record, it also makes sure every record is tied with a universal ID and every correlation ID is accounted for. Stages and marks each correlation ID as complete and updates the staging collection as such and all of the golden records are now in the mastered record. For example, we send them 1,000 unique records, each with a distinct correlation ID. But as I said, if I bought a policy five years ago and I bought a policy one year ago, they are two distinct correlation IDs. But MDM was able to establish them as one golden record for me as a customer for V. Joshi and merge the two correlation IDs into one among many other things that it does. So at the end, we, we run an end-to-end -end reconciliation job to make sure that every correlation ID is accounted for and every record that we receive from the admin, millions of them now are mastered. We are good, we are golden. So this is what enables us to do the initial hydration of mastered records. Following the same principles for security and logging, using KMS, IAM roles and CloudWatch, 
And for error handling, now if there's any error, the event, error event will detail as such and the SNS notification will be sent out to MDM and the data gateway team. Behind the scenes, this is a different S3 bucket that MDM drops it. And here it's the end of job file that we receive from MDM and the golden record file that we receive from them. Step function, happy path, looks similar, file validation, glue job triggering, move to complete folder, and end of step education. Here is the glue job. It's still in running stage, but believe me, it did complete. Here the glue version is still 2.0, same configuration, and the number of workers we wanted to keep the same across ingestion phase and mastering phase. The input parameters are similar with different values. The database connectivity connection parameters are the same. The S3 bucket is different. The files that it needs to process is different. And the MDM's S3 bucket and assumption of roles is the same. Now this is the after of the staging record. Notice that it is marked as complete now because every correlation ID is accounted for. It is also tagged with a universal ID for every correlation ID that we sent them. And this is the golden record, the master copy of the customer. If you notice here, one golden record for a customer has all of the profile information of the customer. And if it got merged, it has the information of the two correlation IDs that it merged and the two contract information that it merged the data from. Great, now the initial hydration is done and we have millions of customers from one admin. That's just half the battle won because customers make updates. And we have to be able to take this data in a timely fashion, finish processing and sync our systems in a timely manner. Admins here will still send us files as a daily cutoff with all of the changes of the customer. But this volume is not huge. It's in the two digits of thousands, if any. So the approach we took here is even though we get the S3 file and an event bridge rule is triggered, the step function here after completing the validation phase, the glue job that triggers is now the integration between data gateway and MDM is more event driven, more near real time, if so. The glue job here has already know that the, we have the complete hydration of the customer. So it will identify, try to identify the correlation ID that it generated from the source records to see a match in the initial hydration. If it's a change to an existing customer golden record, it will mark it so and generate an event for MDM. It also, let's say I bought another policy yesterday. Don't ask me why, third insurance policy. But if I did, that for data gateway is a complete new correlation ID for a new contract. And it will send that information to MDM saying potentially new customer. And if it's actually a customer who just bought a policy yesterday, then that it has no idea about, brand new correlation ID. And even that use case for MDM is still a new customer potentially. MDM, when it receives this information, does its work and identifies if it's an existing correlation ID, existing golden record, like a marital change code that I made a change to, got married, that's a change on the existing golden record. Great, awesome, just take it as is and we are good. But for the policy that I just bought yesterday, it's a new correlation ID, but MDM knows that this is a change to an existing golden record, uses the survivorship rules, and updates the golden record, merges this contract information into the golden record, and it's an update that it sends to back to customer domain. And in case of a complete new customer who just bought a policy yesterday, it has to identify it, generate a golden record, apply a universal ID, and send that event to data gateway. So now the data gateway that receives this event, the lambda year identifies if it's a new golden record 
or an update to an existing golden record and makes the changes to the staging collection and the master golden record collection accordingly. Following the same principles of security and logging and event handling, we, we have this now designed for daily delta processing from the admin and scaled for different admin systems, 44 plus, so to speak. This is the big picture architecture. I talked about the data transfer, data ingestion, MDM, mastering and back, and the daily delta that we have to manage. But this is how it all comes together at the end. We have a long way to go. We've started ingestion, we've done some admins and processing and mastering. Throughout this process, we've built repeatable patterns and reconciliation process and rinse and repeat have been able to identify issues and make it better. But a few changes we want to make in the architecture and design, one being using AWS transfer family. With data sync, we had the challenge of a one hour delay. Now, if you can add it on a daily delta for 44 plus admins, we want to reduce that overhead. With AWS Transfer Family, we'll be able to realize that almost real time. And once the file transfer is done in S3 bucket, then yes, we can apply all the ETL that we want on top of it. And the event streaming across Prudential, we want to adapt and implement a more real time domain driven exchange and data flow, as I had mentioned earlier. And we want to be able to do this with AWS's event bridge. Every domain defines the business event it wants to publish, defines a schema and applies schema registry rules, validation rules, and routing to understand who the consumers are and route it to their necessary endpoints of Kinesis data stream, SQS, Lambda. And other domains will then be able to build microservices on top of the data that it receives from customer domain. We've been on this journey for over a year now. So yes, a uh, lot of room for improvement. We want to stay with the vision of the end goal. We want to be able to decommission the legacy CIS applications and systems. We want to be able to build everything in AWS and the cloud. Keeping a customer-centric approach, we want to build the best capabilities that enable us to service the customer better. We want to automate at every step. A lot of manual coordination currently is being done. A lot of um, testing is manual. We want to be able to automate that. Staying agile, we want to be able to learn from our mistakes, learn from our processes, learn where we can make it better, and always keep learning and adapting. Invest in our talent. A lot of our team members were new to AWS, new to ETL. We were able to now learn, knowledge share, and continuous learning across Prudential that enables us to make this better. Yeah. I talked about our journey, our experiences, our path forward, but it will not be complete without truly recognizing the, the impact that we've made to our people and to our systems. Some of the admin systems that we receive this data from, yes, 50 million customers is where we want to be, and 6 million is not a big number. But as I said, we've been able to identify a lot of issues in our data, in our systems, in our processes, and we've been able to adapt and learn and make progress at every step. Development efficiencies, automation, including testing, manual processes that we have built, we want to automate that so as a click of a button, the file processing can just be seamless. Defining shared patterns, not only within customer domain, but across all domains, wherever we can learn and share with each other. And along with the CTO team, we were able to adapt self-service patterns that helps us take deployer patterns off the shelf and not have to reinvent the wheel. Performance. Legacy mainframe monolithic applications, yes, are cumbersome. So breaking down into microservices, domains, subdomains, each doing their own little bit and responsibility, we'll be able to build 
a more decoupled architecture. And with AWS, we'll be able to build a more scalable and highly available services. With disaster recovery patterns and document DB, giving us the best performance for our services. Skills acceleration, AWS getting learning, adapting, and getting certified. A lot of our team members were also new to ETL and data engineering. We are now able to wear that hat. And with agility, we are always able to make improvements to our people and systems. Where do we want to be tomorrow? Once we have all of the data ingested and we have our systems up and running and we've built the confidence with all of the things that we've done throughout this journey, we'll be able to realize the infrastructure and cost savings from decommissioning the legacy systems, building everything in the cloud. Now with MDM, we'll be able to now also identify with their data aggregation, survivorship, match, and merge, be able to identify a single view of the customer. And with that, we've also in our POC identified that we've been able to establish a better match in terms of the customer data. So we want to keep that going. Now with the single identity of the customer, you can imagine if a customer is calling a CSR representative. Now, the CSR doesn't have to go to multiple admin systems. It's one place it can go and have a 360 view of the customer. And if there's any issues, be able to analyze and fix that in a timely fashion. This reduces the CSR call time. And on the digital space, the customer can go to one place, make all the updates that it needs, have a 360 view themselves, which then brings up the NPS score for Prudential in general. With the Prudential vision, we make lives better. This is our story. Thank you.